hey guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video i thought that i would do a little bit of a different kind of video as far as like foster care because um i've done like a sit down video on like how to prepare for like home visits and your home study and stuff like that but i actually have a visit tomorrow so that i can get back into compliance for um for foster care and so i thought that i would go around as i like clean up and straighten up and prepare i thought that i would like go around and kind of show you guys what i do and how i prepare so before so the things that I needed to get done before I even did the visit was a fire inspection. I can't say for all agencies or all states that you need a fire inspection, but for my area in Texas, I needed a fire inspection. Basically what they check is um, your fire extinguisher, making sure it's either a new fire extinguisher or you bought a new one. I bought a new one because i couldn't find somewhere to get mine inspected so if you know where i can get a fire extinguisher inspected without having to pay an arm and a leg then please leave that down in the comments below because i just went and bought a whole new fire extinguisher and the fire extinguisher that i bought was actually 20 dollars more than what it was when i bought it the last time so hashtag inflation but they check your um they check your fire extinguisher then you have to go and you have to show them all of the smoke detectors and the location of your smoke detectors um that requirement is i guess based on where you live or based on you know the guidelines of your local dcfs but um they did check that another thing that they checked was um the locks um you're not supposed to be able to lock like bedroom doors from like the outside to like lock the child in the room you're not supposed to be able to do that so you can't have locks on the outside of like your bedroom doors or like your bathroom doors and you have to be able to get in for the doors that lock that are like inside of your house you have to be able to um lock it unlock it from the outside if they do lock um what else did they check make sure you didn't have any bars or anything on your windows and if you do have bars on your windows um you have to have quick access to the key to unlock those um those bars just in case of like a fire or anything like that um I'm trying to think of what else i just did this yesterday so i should know um if you have a gas furnace you have to get your furnace inspected. You can call like an HVAC place to come and look at it and they're supposed to give you a report and then you give that report to whoever is doing your fire inspection. So if you have a gas furnace, you do have to get that done before the actual fire inspection. Um, sometimes the uh, person who is going to do your fire inspection, sometimes they will give you a list on people that they recommend what else am i forgetting i think that's it as far as like the fire inspection so i did that yesterday and then tomorrow i have my actual like home visit so i need to straighten up i just got back in town so my house is not too bad it's still <laughs> too bad i haven't been here that long um because i've been traveling so my house is still pretty like clean and pretty straightened up i just have clothes because i'm still trying to wash and put my clothes up from you know my suitcase and then i have like new clothes that i'm trying to like it's all a thing so i'm i have mostly clothes to like put away and straighten up i'm not going to do like a clean with me video because that's not really the point of this video um but i'm just gonna like straighten up so let's get started on preparing for of home visit first thing that i wanted to show is one of these uh strips so i have these throughout my house and um if it is plugged up it is considered a live plug 
So as long as this is plugged up, I have to have one of these in every socket. So how this one, this one doesn't have one. So I'm required to have to put one here. If this is unplugged, then you only need one of these for the wall socket that's over there. Next thing that I'm working on is medication storage. So medication storage, I'm just gonna show you what the lock looks like. I'm not gonna show you the whole bag. This is the type of lock that I have on my medication. It is just a combination lock. Um, it only needs one lock because it's over the counter. And I tend to try to store it um, out of reach of children. I don't remember if out of reach of children is an actual requirement, if it's locked, but I just do it just because um, that just makes the most sense to me. So I just put all my over-the-counter medicine, vitamins. So I'm going to go around my house and I'm going to go find all my over-the-counter medicine because it's been a while since I've been in, um, before I, it's been a while since I've been open for foster care, so I'm sure I probably have some over-the-counter medicine laying around. So I'm just going to go through my house and um, and gather up all my over-the-counter medicine. Um, I don't have any double-locked medication out, so I don't have to worry about that. But as far as like vitamins and over-the-counter medicine, I know I have that laying around. So I'm going to just go collect that stuff and then put it up. And then we can check that one off the list. All right, so the next thing we're gonna move on to is alcohol. Alcohol needs to be stored in the highest um, place that it can be stored, out of reach of children. So I typically store my alcohol, and I have one right here as well. Um, I typically store these on the highest shelf in my pantry. So I'm going to just put these If you have any alcohol storage or like any alcohol in your fridge, you have to put it on the top uh, shelf in the fridge. If I have any alcohol in the fridge, I typically put it on the top shelf in the back um, because everything else is in the front and then you have to kind of like, it makes it a little bit harder to access. Um, I don't think I have any cold alcohol right now, so I don't have to really worry about that. Um, so yeah, so with that one, oh, I need to show, I wanna show you the fire extinguisher. This is the fire extinguisher that I got. There's also a brand called Kitty. Um, you need this one. So it needs to be this one, the 2A10BC. It has to be an ABC fire extinguisher and it has to be a five pound fire extinguisher. So I got this from Lowe's. And also if you have a two-story house um, or house with stairs, you need a fire extinguisher on each level. Um, for me, I just need one in my kitchen. And then, so this is the other one that I have. I'm just going to put this one in the laundry room where my washer and dryer are. And I'm just putting it there just because I feel like that's just like the next place um, I could have a fire besides the kitchen. Um, so I'm just going to put this in the um, in the laundry room. I do have a fire extinguisher in my garage. So um, I feel like I'm well prepared. But I don't want to have to keep buying these. If you have somewhere or you know somewhere where I can get a fire inspection, please let me know. Um, and if it's cheaper than $60, let, definitely let me know because fire extinguishers have gone up. It was not $60 the last time I bought one. It, the, this one was $40 and the new one that I just bought that's right there was $60. So I don't wanna have keep paying $60. All right, so the next place that I'm going to focus on is I'm going to wash my dog bedding um that's not a requirement per se but they want you to have like a clean pet area um you don't want your house to smell like dog or dog excrements um so i just 
like to wash their bedding. My dogs have these little pads. And then I also have like um, dog towels and dog blankets. So I'm just going to throw those in the washing machine just so that they can smell fresh and be all nice and fresh. My dogs don't spend a lot of time in their crates, um, but we they have blankets literally all over my house. So I'm gonna go collect those and I'm going to put them in the washing machine. Uh-oh, I saw we. I was washing it. Okay, I'll wash it later. I saw we. <laughs> I saw we, Mosa. I saw we. Another thing I wanted to show were cabinet locks. My cabinets are a little dirty, sorry. But anyways, um, yeah, cabinet locks. So in here, I keep like cleaning stuff. And then this one is kind of like my mini indoor garage. I have some like tools and plant stuff and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, like make sure your cabinets are locked in the kitchen and in the bathroom, wherever you store your cleaning products and um, like tools and, you know, things that are hazardous to children. And then I have magnetic locks, so um, I keep the magnets up high, just out of child's reach. I think that's pretty much it. I do need to go into the garage i'm going to go ahead and pull out all of the baby stuff the carrier car seat and things like that um i'm gonna pull them out wipe them down um because um i just like to have that out so that they can see i try to have as much stuff out for them to see that i have then rather than have them to ask me if I have it, if that makes sense. So, um, because I remember like from my home study, they wanted to see, like they wanted to know if I had a carrier. I've also been told by uh, CPS or DCFS themselves that I don't need one because they have one. I've had, <laughs> I've had DCFS all, like offer me their car seat. So they're like, oh, you don't have to buy one. We have one, I could have gave it to you. So, but I like to have mine. Uh, because I that's the one I like I keep I never know if I'm gonna have to give it back if the child goes back home or anything like that I never know if I'm gonna have to give give the car seat back so if if DCFS offered you a car seat um yeah ask them if you have to give it back um I didn't ask that because I already had one um so yeah um I don't know if that's a thing or if that was just the caseworker that I came in contact with but yeah she offered me the car seat and I was she was like yeah you don't have to buy one and I could have gave this gave you this one so yeah but I don't know if that's a thing um so yeah so we're gonna move on to the next thing while I was on break I did end up um taking this crib down so for my um walkthrough for my visit I did put the crib back up and then I made the bed so you have to have the crib. I'm not 100% sure if it has to be set up during your visit, but I just thought it would just be a little bit easier if I just did. I did want to add that if you have a placement but you don't have a crib, you are allowed to use a pack and play. I'm not really sure what the amount of time is, but I know that you are allowed initially to have a pack and play until you can find a crib. So that I didn't have to like go through the closet and all that stuff. I just put the sheets on here with the little blanket. And then you do have to have a mattress protector. That is a requirement. Um, you have to have a waterproof mattress protector on the mattress. So that is something that you do have to show during the visit or at least I did. So I did end up bringing my car seats in from the garage. Um, I have a couple bases and then both of these car seats here. And I did wipe them down with some diluted cleaner. I just diluted it with warm water and then just wiped them down because they have been in the garage for a couple months. So I just wiped them down, just made sure they were clean, uh, cleaned up any crumbs that were like underneath the cushions and stuff like that. 
Um, I do, I did end up buying this one. I don't think I've showed this in any of my foster care videos. I did do a review on this one. This one is part a part of the Grey Coast Modes Nest. But then I did end up buying this one, which is the Safety First Grow and Go Sprint. So if you would like a review on this one, I ended up buying this one because um, at the time, my relief, me and my relief care provider both needed car seats for our cars. So I did brought, buy this extra one. Um, now that I've changed my age range, I may have to buy another one of these because I don't know if my next placement is going to fit in this one. Um, this one is only up to, I believe, a year old. So this one works from like newborn up to, uh, it goes all the way through like their whole car seat venture years and stuff like that. Um, so if you would like a review on this one, please let me know and I'll do that for you guys. But yeah, I just set it up and then it's been about a week since that last clip. I've had my um, walkthrough. It went well. Uh, I am open again. One thing that I didn't mention in the video that I probably should mention is uh, your firearm storage. Make sure that you're storing your firearms in accordance to what your agency or your local DCFS office requires you to um, because they will check that as well. So just what, however they ask you to store it is the way that it needs to be stored. Um, but yeah, I'm open, I'm excited to get back to work or I'm excited to be back open and accepting placement. Um, I don't know how long I'll be waiting this time. If you remember, I was first licensed last March and I didn't get my first placement until August, I think it was. So hopefully I'm not waiting that long. Not that I want them to be like snatching children out of their homes or anything like that, but I'm just open, I'm excited again, and I'm ready to get started again. Um, so yeah, but thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.